shout it out. We're alive, cause you're alive, and what a love we found. Death can't hold us down. We shout it out. We're alive, cause you're alive. Turn if you would this morning to the book of Luke. The book of Luke, chapter number 10. I also want to go to the book of Ephesians. And uh, we'll, we'll begin there with chapter number 2. Luke chapter number 10 and Ephesians chapter number 2. We've been talking about your authority in Christ. This is the fourth part in this series. I've enjoyed this a lot. I, I just feel like I've been kind of inspired by the Word of God and uh, just have just loved getting into this. Uh, you know, seeing who we are in Christ. Uh, if I know what Christ has done for me, and that's talking about knowledge. If I know what Christ has done for me, and if I know who I am in Christ, brother buddy, then I should, talking about authority, then I should freely function in the authority that has been made possible and granted unto me through Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus has blessed the church with authority. I know we don't hear a lot about that, but he has blessed the church. He has touched the church by giving us authority. Why he, has he done that? One reason that he has done that is so that the enemy of your soul remains in his defeated state. And then the flip side of that is so that the believers in Jesus Christ remain in our victorious state. Yeah. Give God praise this morning as we get going with this message. I want to encourage you today to, uh, and I, I've done this before recently, but I want to encourage you today to not confuse, though, things that happen in the natural with things that happen in the supernatural. Because, as I shared with you perhaps last week, I think there are a lot of times when people are, Christian people, are giving the devil credit for things that he did not do and certainly does not deserve credit for. For example, I'll share with you that uh, this past week, Pam's alternator went out on her van. And uh, I will share with you first what I did not do. I did not stop when I found that out and rebuke the devil and take authority over him. Because that would be like rebuking an ink pen when it ran out of ink. The devil didn't do it. The devil didn't do it. The devil did not destroy her alternator. 147,000 miles in 18 years, Brother Donnie Smith. That's what destroyed her alternator. So what did I do? Instead of rebuking the devil, I trusted God as a tither right. to get it fixed and pay for. Right. Are y'all with me today? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hey, I will tell you, I generally know when I'm under attack by the enemy and, and uh, when I'm not. I, you know, I, I think maybe we all can feel that. We know when it's an enemy attack uh, or it's just us having a bad day. But I will tell you for a fact that either way, I'm ultimately a victorious child of God, living life as a son of the Most High, and I'm on my way to heaven today. Amen? Amen. I went down this past Friday to visit with Lydia. Her birthday is today, as a matter of fact, and uh, Simba was there. You see Simba behind me on the screen, and... and uh, Simba is just an incredible dog. I love Simba, a golden doodle. Uh, but Simba just absolutely went nuts uh, when I got there, when I walked in, like he always does. He's, he's just a, a very high-energy type dog, and, but he's a happy dog. He's always a happy dog, but he just goes absolutely nuts when I get there. And, and uh, he's, he's, here again, he's a good dog, but you have to watch him close when you see him start to cut his eye over at you. You gotta watch that look right there, uh, because you never know what he might be up to. Anyway, here I am. I walked in, and and I decided just to take a little opportunity and play with Simba. And right when you walk in Lydia's front door, 
uh, immediately to the left is a love seat, a large love seat. And so I just started going around and around because he was energetic. He wanted to chase me. And, and anyway, we were just having an amazing time with me. I'd go back and forth, and then I would go around, and, and he was just uh, running after me and nipping at my heels. And I mean, he was having so much. I never remember that ever, though, with Simba before, where he would grab at the soles of my shoes, at the heels. Uh, I never remember that. I mean, he was playing. He certainly wasn't trying to hurt me at all. didn't hurt me at all. But somehow out of that, when I, when I felt him nipping at my heels, somehow I was reminded, don't ask me how, but I was reminded of the anchor scripture that we've been dealing with for about a month now where Jesus said in Luke chapter 10 and verse number 19, he said, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. The enemy, here's what I recognize, Sister June, the enemy may nip at your heels from time to time, but Scripture says and Scripture declares to you that he cannot hurt you by any means. Go ahead and give him praise again today, if you will. I want to take a few moments this morning. I want to do something that I'm not sure I've ever done before. And I know that's scary to some people. But I want to briefly remind you of the three things, the three points that I gave to you last Sunday morning. Uh, I just felt led to do that. First of all, as we were looking at the words of the Apostle Paul in the book of Ephesians, we were specifically talking about Paul's prayers for the church. And Paul prayed that the eyes of the church would be open. Not the eyes of the world. He wasn't praying for the eyes of the world to be open. He was praying that the eyes of the church would be open. Amen? Open to what? God wants us to know what it is that he has accomplished. What it is that Jesus Christ accomplished. When he gave his life, and then what happened when he was raised from the dead and ascended on high? God wants us to know that Christ has set us, or that God has set us far above with Christ, all principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, all of these things, might and dominion, all of those things. God wants us to know that. Amen? The second thing that I shared with you last Sunday morning was that the act of God that raised Christ from the dead also raised his body, the church, us. So in other words, when Christ was raised up, I've been giving you scripture for this. You say, when are you going to quit preaching on this topic? When we all get it, I'll quit preaching on it. <laughs> when, when God raised Jesus Christ up, and we were seated together. We'll talk about that more a little bit later. When he did that, he raised up the body of Christ. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the plan of God, we were raised up with him. Now if that sounds a little weird to you, just look at scripture. We've been looking at it. Christ is the head. You and I are the body. Christ is the head, we are the body, and we are seated with him in the heavenly places. Therefore, we are to function as one individual. We talked about this pretty much at length last week. The third thing that I shared with you was that everything that is under today, everything that is under Jesus' feet is under our feet. I didn't give him the scripture for all that. I just wanted to introduce the message with that. I would tell you today that to surrender completely to Jesus Christ is the most phenomenal thing that you can ever do as an individual. It is the most incredible thing to surrender your life completely to him. I see so many people today who are playing church, who are playing Christian, and I will share with you that that does not work. It will get you by. It will create perhaps a mask that you can go through society with, but it does not work. But to be completely surrendered to Jesus Christ, 
That is the only way to go. You are either born again or you're not. You're either walking with him, walking in the spirit, or you're not. And I will share you, and you say, Pastor, well, you're, you're not being very politically correct today, but I will share with you that you and I need to make heaven. Because heaven is a real place and hell is a real place. And nobody's going to heaven unless they know Christ as Savior. Go ahead and give him praise today if you would. I'll tell you today that I have trouble and things go wrong in my life just like yours. But I will also tell you that I never have to wonder whether my God is going to take care of everything in my life and take care of me. I never, ever, ever have to wonder those things. In the book of Ephesians, I want to key in on the second chapter today, beginning in verse number 4. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 4. Scripture says, but God. I always love that when I read that in the Bible. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love. That's where everything is founded. Uh, God is love. Because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, you realize God was able to look ahead? Even when we were dead in trespasses, Scripture says that he made us alive. Amen. Not only that, did he make us alive, though, he made us alive together. With Christ, says, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up together and made us sit together. Are y'all with me today? In the heavenly places in Christ. Are y'all with me today? I, that's good. That's a good word. Brother Lindell, it's a good, good word. Now, I'm about, in just a moment, I'm going to give you the first point that I want to share. But I promise you today, I promise you, I am not poking fun at what's going on in this world today. But point number one is this, if you want to write it down. God has caused you to sit next to his son in need of zero social distancing. I mean, can you picture a, a chair here and a chair here? We sit together in the heavenly places. And we're talking about authority. I don't know anybody I'd rather sit by if I was needing authority than Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. But God has caused you to sit, next to, to sit next to his son with zero need for social distancing. You and I are with him as believers in Jesus Christ. Amen? He has made us to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, yet we hardly know anything about what that really means. hear a whole lot about. So where are, we, where are we sitting and where is Jesus sitting? We are sitting together in heavenly places in Christ. So in other words, wherever Jesus is seated, you're seated there as a believer. Are y'all with me this morning? Wherever the head is, the body is. Amen. There you are, you're all sitting there this morning in your seats all nice, prim and proper. And I look around and everywhere I see your head, I see your body. That's a wonderful thing, I'll tell you. It's, a wonderful thing. It, it's an incredible thing. It's, it's good. Now, now I'll just tell you, if if I if I looked over today and and uh, Brother Lindell's head was on Brother Wayne's body, and Brother Wayne's head was on Brother Lindell's body. I would, it'd be mass confusion, Brother Kevin. I would know something is wrong. Wouldn't you? If they were separated from the way it was meant to be. Yet, yeah, I can tell you I'm thankful that everything seems to be in perfect working order there. And I look across the sanctuary today and everything is in perfect working order because everybody's hands with the right person's body. You're sitting on one seat. 
Amen. Your head and your body are on the same seat. Amen. If you're thankful for that, give Jesus praise this morning. Amen. Likewise, I assure you that everything in heavenly places is in proper working order. Amen. Christ is the head. We are the body and we are to function perfectly unified with him. Amen. We are to operate in the authority that has been provided to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. When the enemy comes in like a flood, I promise you God raises up a standard and he has given the church the authority to deal with those things. Give him praise again, if you will, today. So Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father at the throne of God. In the center of the power of the whole universe. And we're seated with him. Did anybody get what I just said? He is seated right there at the center of the power of the entire world. And we're seated with him. When we start to ponder that and understand that, I think we understand then how certain scriptures then begin to come together and make sense. For instance, Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 16, where it says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. You or I, no one, can come boldly to any king's throne unless we are in right relationship with that king. You just try it. Try it here on planet Earth and see if you don't get stopped. You try to get in the White House without an invitation and see if you don't get stopped. Amen? Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. How many of you have had a need this past week? Amen. You can come boldly to the throne of grace and you may obtain mercy and find grace to help in your time of need. Amen. We don't come as equals. We don't come as deity. I understand that. You understand that. But we come as partakers of the divine promises of God made possible through Jesus Christ. Amen. Give him praise again this morning. Amen. The same authority that was committed to the ascended Lord is to be exercised by the church. Now, I'm not preaching some weird doctrine today. I'm preaching your Bible. Amen. We know that Christ, with his physical resurrected body, at the right hand of the Father, is in full possession of his rights, awaiting the time when all his enemies are made his footstool. So when we are elevated, when we have been, past tense even in our case as believers, when we were elevated with Christ into the heavenly places, that means that we, in perfect unity again, share with his authority. You say, are you trying to take something away from Christ? No, not at all. He has made it all possible. He is the one who gave his life, who was raised from the dead and ascended on high. But we were elevated with him, church. Yes. Amen. We are partakers of the authority of the throne. We are partakers of the authority that the throne of God represents. That we may exercise to the extent of our spiritual comprehension our authority over the powers of the enemy. There's an enemy out there. Let's not stick our head in the sand and pretend that there's no enemy out there. But you and I have authority over the enemy and we have authority over the conditions that have been instigated and perpetrated and executed by the enemy. We have authority over those things. So when the enemy comes at you, you take the authority that is given you because you have comprehended through the word of God and even through the preaching of the word of God, you have comprehended that that authority belongs to you. Therefore, you act upon that authority. You put the devil in his place where he belongs. Amen. 
those in America today, from Hollywood to the United States Capitol, who need the true church to stand in the gap and make up a hedge. Amen? Amen. There is demonic influence that has manipulated the minds and the lives of our leaders long enough. And I'm placing part of this back on us today. It's up to us to stand in the gap for those individuals that are leading us. Amen? Because we have a purpose and it is clear. We have a mission. It is concrete. We are not, our motto is not when the saints come drag it in. Our motto ought to be when the saints go marching in. Amen? When the church of the living God is on the move, retreat is not a word in our vocabulary. Amen? Amen. I will tell you for a fact today with all this going on, I'm not afraid. Because I have a home prepared where the saints abide just over in the glory land. Amen. I may get a little bit tired here and there. I may get a little bit weary. But it won't last long because I'm leaning on the everlasting arms, church. Amen. I've got blessed assurance because Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Give God praise today if you want to Let's go to chapter 2 of the book of Ephesians, verse number 1. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 1. Scripture says, and you, point to your neighbor and say he's talking to you today. And you, he made alive. Who were dead in trespasses and sins. And you, he made alive. Who were dead in trespasses and sins. In which you once walked according, talking about Back there somewhere prior to salvation, you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. In your life, you and I once walked in our lives, we once walked hand in hand, if you will, with the prince of the power of the air before we gave our lives to Christ and surrendered to Christ. I will tell you today, if you're listening even now, and you've not surrendered your life to Christ, you're not walking with the Lord. You're walking contrary to Him. Totally contrary. But I'm thankful that now, as believers, we're raised up with Him. We're no longer walking with the devil. We're walking hand in hand, if I can use that terminology, with the Lord. Amen. I want you to think about, uh, let's go to John chapter number 14. John chapter 14 and verse number 12. Consider your place with the Lord, sitting next to him, raised up in the heavenly places with Christ. That being the case, imagine what God would have planned for us to do operating in him. Through him, in his authority, by his spirit. John 14, verse number 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Watch this. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. Now, we talked about this word, word, uh, this, word uh, this verse, and its relevance to the Holy Spirit back in... January of this year, but it also has a very direct uh, spiritual connection to our to the authority that is found in Christ. Amen. Now I want you to watch this. Think about this. The authority that Jesus operated in on planet Earth. It all ties into this verse of Scripture. It multiplied exponentially. When he was seated at the right hand of the Father. Are y'all with me? The authority that Jesus operated in on planet earth when he was here. That's when we got this scripture was when he was here. Walking, talking, breathing, sharing, ministering, healing, touching, delivering, all those things. That's where we get this scripture. But then we find now in our lives we recognize He's not over in Israel walking around Jerusalem and Bethsaida and Galilee and wherever. 
now he is with the Father at his right hand. Where are we? We're seated with him in the heavenly places. So when Christ did what he did, and he's there in the heavens, and we are with him, all of a sudden, authority went to an exponential value. Amen. Amen. Here again, we talked about this a while back. I want to go to Ephesians chapter 6. Let's look at verse number 11. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 11. Familiar with the verse, it says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the trickery, the evil, uh, all those things of, of the devil. But verse 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this. Let me stop right here for a second and say, if you're fighting with people, quit. If you're fighting with people at work, just quit. Quit it. No, I'm not saying quit your job. Quit fighting with people. You don't wrestle against, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you don't wrestle against flesh and blood. You wrestle against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Let me say what I said just a moment ago. Jesus' authority, when you and I, when he went to be with the Father, and you and I were lifted up and seated with him in the heavenly places, his authority through the church multiplied exponentially again as he birthed the church amen so Paul said we don't wrestle against flesh and blood he said I want you to try to picture all this we, we don't have a good mental picture of it but do your best because it's an ugly ugly scene he said we wrestle against principalities we wrestle against powers against the rulers I'm just picturing if, if, if I could look, if all that was right down here on the floor right now, I'm just picturing it, it would be an ugly scene. Principalities, and it would be an evil scene, wouldn't it? Be an ugly scene. For some people in the world, it would be an intimidating scene if they could see the principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this age. Paul said, spiritual host of wickedness. Now, here again, picture all of that stuff. You and I are above it. You and I are above it, amen? When it comes to exercising authority, all those things are under our feet. You remember that song? Maybe we sang it here a while back. I can't remember. Uh, oh, I remember now when we, we sang it, but uh, he's under my feet, he's under my feet, Satan is under my feet. According to the scripture, he really is. Do you understand that today, church? As a believer in Jesus Christ, Satan is under your feet. Principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, wickedness in heavenly places. It's all under your feet because you're seated at the right hand of Jesus Christ with him in the heavenly places today. Give God praise in this place. Now we know that Satan became the uh, little g God of this world when Adam took of the forbidden fruit. We understand that. Adam had dominion on the earth. He did, but he fell. And Satan was later referred to by the Apostle Paul as the God of this world. Little g, God of this world, or God of this age, depending on which translation you're reading from. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 3 says, But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. I will tell you that as a believer in Jesus Christ, we're open to an incredible amount of blessings of God, authority from God, knowledge from God, if we'll just get in there and dig for it and seek him for it. Amen? Verse number four, whose minds the little g, God of this age, or God of this world, I think King James, this is New King James, has blinded. People are walking around today who have not surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ completely, their minds are blinded by the little g, God of this world, who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the 
image of God should shine on them. Now, what I want you to see, though, is that even though Satan is called the little g, God of this age or God of this world, he is not dominating us. Absolutely is not. The true church isn't hurting at all. If anybody tries to tell you differently, they are lying to you. They are mistaken. We are victorious. We are overcoming. We are looking every day for the Lord's very, very soon return. And we're not going to limp over to the other side because Jesus Christ has made a way for us. Amen. Go ahead and give God praise today if you would. I hope we all understand today that we are the army of the living God right here on planet earth. Everything has been exponentially changed. So you and I are walking planet earth. Millions of believers are walking planet earth today, led by the spirit, able to walk in the authority that Jesus Christ has promised and has given to us. And we are walking right now armed for battle on planet earth. And there is no devil who can stop you. There's no evil spirit who can stop you. I will tell you, God... It's on the move today. <laughs> Have you ever heard a minister at a wedding say something like this? By the power vested in me, by the state of, let's say, Arkansas, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You ever heard something like that? You and I can say with truth and conviction today that by the authority vested in me through Jesus Christ and in his name, I take authority over Satan. I take authority over hell. I take authority over the evils of this world. And I will live my life in a victorious manner. My children will be blessed. My home will be blessed. My people will be blessed. Amen. Because God Almighty has made a way for you and I. Would you stand with me today? Amen. Brother Rodney, would you come? I want to make today. I said Brother Rodney. Brother Caleb. Where are you at? <laughs> I forgot Brother Rodney had the day off. <laughs> Brother Justin, would you come play the keyboard, please? <laughs> Where does it all start? Where does it all start? Yeah. It does. It all starts this way. It's the same for... Linda Wayne Keller, it's the same for me, same for Justin, same for Jessica, same for Heidi, same for Ronnie, same for Linda, and Linda, and Linda's watching. It all starts the same. It's about I just totally surrender my life to God. You know, it's troubling sometimes that uh, I, I hurt sometimes when I see people that they just don't know because they, they've been, their minds have been blinded by the, by the enemy. Friends of the power of the air, the, the mind, their mind has been blinded by the enemy, that there's a better way to live. There's a better life. Now, if, if they could really experience it, I, I know that would that changes everything. But here's something I believe very, very firmly. Uh, I don't think God is looking for people who will who will take Him on as a trial basis. We either surrender or not. I mean, we can sing about try Jesus and all that. And I, I can, you know, I, I can get that to a degree. But if you don't completely surrender, you never made the switch. You were never born again. You all get what I'm saying? If, if you want to halfway surrender to God, I don't think that works. Uh, we're not in a spiritual democracy. God is God. He is Almighty God. And so to surrender your life means you surrender it. Yes, we say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. And that's a wonderful thing, an amazing thing to have our sin forgiven. 
But along with that, alongside that comes that, Lord, I'm going to serve you from now on. I'm going to serve you from now on. Not I'm going to give you a try for a week. No. Scripture says that we are to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe today that he has forgiven my sin. He has washed me in his blood. He has made me a new creation. I am born again. I am the redeemed of the Lord. As I said earlier in the service, I'm on my way to heaven. I'm looking for his return. He's coming back. He really is coming back. No joke. The media may make a joke out of it sometimes. It's no joke. The Lord's coming back. We should not live another day on this planet without total surrender. Without total surrender. Pray with me today. If you would just bow your heads. And, Father, we come to you today and I thank you, Lord, for God, everyone who is here in this building, those in Kids Church, all those who are watching online right now. And I recognize as the song was saying a while ago, Lord God, you are on the move. You're saving lives. You're saving people from uh, the depths of sin. You are delivering people from the chains of bondage. And Lord, today, God, I thank you that you have so divinely, by your great love, you have chosen to bring in the whosoevers. For Lord, I'm a whosoever. Whosoever will come shall be saved as we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So Lord God, I thank you today for what you have done as you have, Lord, provided so many promises for us. Lord, today, God, we focus on this one, for this moment that you would, Lord, speak to our hearts, that our lives would be changed for anyone who is listening today, and they know that their heart is not right, that they've not been living completely for you, that they've not asked you to come and live and reside as not only Savior, but also Lord of everyday life. Lord God, I ask that the conviction of your Holy Spirit come upon us right now. Lord, that we would recognize that I can no longer walk through this world playing church, uh, playing Christian. I can no longer go through this world without Christ as the center of my heart. And Lord, today, God, I give you praise for that in Jesus' name.